The Marching Roundtable's appearance at Carolina Crown Spring Training was made possible by Fred J. Miller Incorporated, found at fjminc.com. So let's not talk about some specific things in this year's Crown Show. So your computer's right here. I'm looking at this. I'm super excited. So what parts of the concepts of this year's show or how it's charted can you share with us today? Well, I can I can show you like can I the can I show the screen sure, a little ahead. bit? Why not? Okay, so I'm gonna I don't I'm gonna have any problem move this that. over, and so you can see that your workstation. There's the drill on on your computer. It's a great setup, by the way. You have your your laptop. Your uh... all right. So we, this is the awesome setup that you have in your in this little dorm room where you're getting all this work done. So what can you show us about the way that you are charting this year's show? What would you like to tell us? Well, I I, I think um, we. First and foremost, we kind of changed the structure of the organization of the drum corps a little bit. We kind of moved the pit out of its regular normal home up on the front sideline here. We kind of shipped in the back. Um, so was there a discussion about why that decision was made? Well, we kind of wanted to have this space open up front to use, to have usable right. space. You right. know, be more, more intimate with the audience instead of being, and also wanted to give an opportunity for the pit to be on stage more instead of just looking over them to the drum corps. Right. So we want to make sure right. they, they have a, had a better performance opportunity. So this, this big green thing on your screen is the stage that's been created. Yeah, we have a 60-foot stage um, that goes behind the pit where throughout the production and there's ramps behind it, there'll be featured performers on top of that. Plus there's set pieces in the back that kind of changes through time as, as the show goes on. So as a drill writer, having that stage and that pit placed there, is that um, an advantage, uh, an obstacle? Like how do you think about it? How do you work with it? It does change our thinking uh, in some respects on how we want to kind of place the, the group on the field. We definitely end up with this pocket of sorts. Um, and we try to also kind of make sure we're working on each side to make sure we are have a lot of variety and change of feel as we go on. But the ultimate reason we did this is because we wanted the space to be performable. We wanted to have a, a more intimate connection to the crowd. Um, right, so it allows, oh I see, so even on this chart that we're looking at. Yeah, they go off the field. Right, you know, we're right allowed, up there in the front. We're allowed to use 15 feet across the front sideline um, for any performer. So we are choosing to, to use that zone as perform, performable space. And I think the judges will enjoy that too because they're they're only bound to this far anyway now. So, <laughs> ah, that's true. I think the field guys will enjoy that. <laughs> Was that part of the thinking? That no, new rule? Not at all. <laughs> but it, it's going to be helpful for some of uh, for them. So, we're so be what are the close. color? Can I ask about the color coding of the prop things in the back? Is that have to do with the show itself, or is that just a way of you to keep track? Me to keep track. Number one, they are three different types of props that are nested, and they kind of come apart as the show develops, and that's just the color keeps keeps me uh, in charge of everybody else so I know who they are. Same thing with the instrumentation. I have everybody color coded so I know my trumpets are here, my mellophones, my percussion is in black. I got, you know, blues for the baritones and yellows for the tubas. And then what's the what are all these uh, the red things? Is that the color guard? guard? Color guard, yeah. Why do you use D's? Well I kinda track them on what they're actually doing. So like they're dancers at this point. They have their labels, if, if you know what pirate is. They all have their labels, their numbers, but I, I I know that they're going to be dancers, and for the guard staff, when they're looking at it, they can say to myself, oh, these guys are going to be dancers here. So right. every time they see a, a depiction of a letter, as the, they know what equipment they're on. Okay. It just helps them kind of be more intimate with what's going on with the physical charts when they're teaching it, instead of like guessing, what are we doing here? They know, it's, it's a little, little, little detail I like to do, and, it, and they'll, they'll change. Like when, this, when these guys pick up rifles, they'll change to R's for their rifles. So like, okay. it's, just, it's one of those things I, I, I feel is helpful for uh, the staff to kind of keep track of what's going on on whatever yeah. given page. Cool. It's different when someone's looking at page, you know, 50 and everybody's an X and they don't know who that is. Right. You know, they don't know what they're doing. I agree. It's one of those things that I try to do for them. Um, but the instrumentation, you use X's for everybody, but then colors. Yeah. Colors for, a, yeah. Because the color is always changing. You know what I mean? They're always kind of changing. So I, I kind of just use what they're, you know, they're... F's if they're flagged, there's S's if they're sabers, there are R's if they're rifles. So how do you keep track of the drum line if you don't have symbols, or do you? Oh, they do. They you just turn them. on this. You just turn on the labels so I can keep track. Yeah, that's the labels. Okay, so, so that's your system. That's what I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and everybody's got a number T1 to T24. Got it. You know, and then they all have numbers. But when I'm writing, I turn that off because I don't really need to know that. And I kind of obviously I know who's who, you know, more than better than anybody else. So cool. 
So are there any concepts about this year's show that you can share with us? And since this is going to be out after the show's being seen, that you'd like to talk about, like, that has influenced your writing or how you've decided to stage? Um, I'm going to sort of put you on the spot with that, but, like, I, is there anything about the concept of the show that has changed the way you've decided to stage it or, or write the drill? Well, some of the underlying themes of the concept, um, I mean, I guess I can say that the title of the show is going to come out afterwards. And the yeah. title of the show is called Beneath the Surface. And it's one of those, um, it's, a, it's an aesthetic and it's a feel, it's a look um, that has to do with what's, what's more than just out there. Or what's, what's the deeper meaning of some things. And we're, we're stuck in the world of pageantry where we're very ta sometimes. The grandeur of it all, the big swag, the flags and the, the, the uniform and the props. We've gotten to a point where it's become such a production. And we're trying to, we're trying to, we, we still want to be in that tone, but we want to kind of say there's more to it than that. So some of the costuming is see-through. Some of the props are not purposely there to, to hide anything, but we can see through it and we can see different layers of what's going on within, within that. Okay, um, cool. So on its surface level, it's a drum for a show. We're going to play loud, we're going to move fast, and we're going like, to do all the things that hit the right buttons that makes the crowd enjoy us. But there's a deeper thing on how do we look in into what's really happening, you know, and we, we'll, we play around with, with, with plexiglass and things of that nature as we kind of go through the course of the show, and these props are kind of set up, stacked, it has an image when it's all together, but when you take them apart, you see the image broken, you know, in, in its form. So we, it's, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, what is really below what's going on, you know? And, you know, a lot, a lot of times for drum corps, or even music writers and, and myself visual writers, you know, the composition is what itself. It goes along, the music says what it says, but there's layers underneath of the writing, like the complex lines, and especially for me, how I kind of move people and, and uh, how it all kind of works together within the musical phrasing, you know, com compositionally, you know, the effect of it all hits you, but, but, but the details of what's going on within that have, have, a, have a, a deeper quality. Um, and in that respect, there's also... a, a um, a connection to you know some of the natural things in life. We we kind of use reference from sacred geometry, where there's all sorts of shapes that's found within nature that that can, that can be related through mathematics that we right. see. You know, like the Fibonacci sequence and you know, the idea if you look at a, a, a shell and has that that spiral, or you right. see a flower how it blooms and the way that the there there those are shapes that are found universally all over. Um, you know, the world, yeah, and there's like there's this philosophical thing of, of math and science and how that kind of relates to nature, you know. And we're kind of developing within some of the patterns that I kind of work through. I could give some reference to that, so they have some meaning to that. And there's a few developmental ideas through form that's a good thing to hold on to, um, which is another layer, you know, beneath the surface of what we're doing. You know, that's really interesting because a lot of times shows have these complex layers. That maybe we re we react to subconsciously, but you're maybe making us more aware of those than one might typically. Well, we're trying to do both things, okay? So right. like for for the person right. who's going to come see it once or twice or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, there, it's a drum core show in and of itself. We, we're gonna we're gonna play, we're gonna we're gonna spin, we're gonna we're gonna move, right, we're right, gonna right. try to make you you know laugh and cry and all in between when that happens, you know what I mean? You know, and we're hoping that that's that says something. We all, we're also hoping that there's another layer behind, be, beneath that, that that you can turn around and take away, you know, some of these c concepts as well. So. Very, very interesting. Sounds like a lot of fun for a designer to work on that level, too. Sort it of, is. Sort of blatantly it work is. on that level. You know, it, it's, what's great about this whole thing is it's a very collaborative effort between all of us, you know, and, um, you know, I'm definitely appreciative of everybody else's talents in the room, and you know, we just try, we just try to want to make a good show that everybody is um, proud of ourselves, and then we want to make sure we have an audience that appreciates it, you know, and, and can kind right. of like, you know, cheer when we want them to cheer and, and be engaged when we want them to be engaged, you know. What was interesting is we did a clinic over the weekend, and you know, you never really know how some of this thing is going to work until you actually get it out there. We did a brass clinic, and um, you know, we we were working on like the first two sections of the show, and it was great to have a crowd feel some of the reactions and the rawness of it, you know. So. See them react. Yeah. Like yeah. they're going to react. You, hope, summer. you know, you set things up that they're going to have those reactions, you know. We plan these things for those moments and you never really know sometimes until you, until you get it out there in front of people. So Interesting. So that's one of the exciting things about being a drill designer is seeing people react to your work like that. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, 
first and foremost for me, you know, like I, I, I love to be able to create visual phrasing that is exciting, not only for members, but for the audience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for, you've been doing this at such a high level for such a long time. Thank you for giving us a peek into the behind the scenes of your process. You're welcome. And your very cool setup here <laughs> in your little dorm room. It's amazing, people. You can do great work no matter where you are. Right? Oh, yeah. Of course you can. I love it. Thank you for talking to me. It was great. Yeah, thank you. Find other interviews and videos from top DCI designers, instructors, and marchers, behind the scenes videos, interviews, and podcasts from winter camps, spring training, traveling during the season, and performances, all at marchingartseducation.com slash DCI-2019. The Marching Roundtable is proud to be an official media partner of Drum Corps International.